Well, good morning and welcome to Noah's Window. Mary Alice, I want to tackle a big question today and uh, we'll get to it in just a second. But, you know, I think one of the issues that a lot of people have who try to follow Christ, but at the same time still get a lot of the messaging from the world system, I hear a lot of times, well, I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but I'm not sure I can buy into God as creator. Mm. Because, you know, I believe in evolution. I believe in Darwinian evolution, but somehow along the way, Jesus came along and he became a savior. And, and so the question is, can I follow Christ and yet at the same time not believe in God as creator? I, I know uh, this happened some time back. Uh, a, a, a attendee came to one of our staff and was talking about how much, at first, how much they admired me and how much they appreciated my communication. And then the, the guy went on to say, but you know there's one place where I really feel sorry for Mark, and that is he believes in creation. Well, I mean, first off, I, I don't take anything personal about that, I and mean, please don't feel sorry for me because I've looked at everything the other side has to offer, and I've looked at what God says, and, and to me, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not challenging. However, I do want to deal with that question. Is it really important to believe in God as creator? Now, I know that Christ followers have different views about creation. I don't want to get into that, but I'm just saying there are those who have the idea that you don't have to believe in God as a first source but somehow you can accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And they, they, they try to walk both roads. Of course, that goes back to the Garden of Eden because you have Adam and Eve, they enjoyed God's company in the garden, but at the same time, they wanted what Satan had to offer. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a whole lot of that today. I mean, do you see that? Oh, I think this is such a critical question to ask because if we don't understand the core of who God is, I don't mean understand everything about him, but he has introduced himself. So he introduced himself through the creation. And the yeah. Bible even tells us now, every day when we wake up, he's introducing himself through his creation. And if we say, sorry, God, I, you know, I just don't think that you're, that, I don't think that's who you are. I don't think that's what you mean. We, 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 we have to have a starting point of our identity. And our identity is we are created by God. If, if he didn't create us, what claim does he have on us? Well, I remember when I was a kid, even then, there were a lot of seminaries, schools that trained pastors, especially in mainstream denominations in the United States, who, because of what uh, was happening with Darwinism and it's, uh, you know, it was running through the culture, uh, well, really, I guess, from the 20s on, but definitely it was there by the 60s. And so, because the culture was so baptized in Darwinism, you had seminaries that were saying, well, we still believe in Jesus. But the first 11 chapters of the, Genesis, mm -hmm. of, of the book of Genesis are not true. Right. Well, if you take the first 11 chapters of Genesis out of the Bible, then the rest of it makes no sense because there you have God creating, you have sin, you have the flood, you know, you have all these things happening uh, by the time you get to the 11th chapter of Genesis. And it, of course, it wasn't long after that that those seminaries went completely into unbelief, and that's mm -hmm. where we are today. But I, I just really think it's important for us to think about the fact that the person of Jesus makes no sense if God didn't create the world. Right. And, and at the end of the day, I mean, talk about this for just a second, Mary Alice. At the end of the day, people are going to have to ask themselves the question, which narrative makes more sense? I mean, there, there isn't going to be some kind of uh, Rosetta Stone. There's not going to be some kind of proof where someone can say, okay, here is the proof of Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. On the other hand, I've seen the so-called proof uh, for, for Darwinism, and I, it's, it's nowhere, it's not there either. I mean, let's just be honest, it's not there. And of course, I know that the, you know, the elitists throw a hissy fit at that and say, well, of course, there's proof. No, there's not proof of Darwinism. No, you can't prove the impossible, and that's where it is. But at the end of the day, you have to ask ourselves a question, which narrative makes more sense? Because when we look at the sophistication of creation, mm -hmm. you either have to say there was a there was a intelligent first cause, or it happened by accident, right? Well, even the most out in the wool evolutionist will have to admit, when faced with the preponderance of evidence yeah. that there is intelligent design behind this creation, they will they will do a little dance and dodge and maybe say, um, well. We definitely there is the signature, what appears to be the signature of intelligence. Maybe it was aliens. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really it's the A B G thing. Anything but God. It's it's rebellion against God. Yeah. It's not really about the evidence. It's not. It's about I refuse 
to accept that God is the creator. There is so. a difference, and, and I'd love to hear your take on this. There is a huge difference. There's an eternal difference between doubt and unbelief, mm -hmm. right? Right. So we're not saying, help me understand. You know, I, I can see the evidence that God has presented, but help me understand this. Um, and I absolutely refuse to look at the evidence mm -hmm. because I've already decided. When I think I about doubt, I'm thinking about I'm struggling with right. this. Right, I'm struggling when, to understand. When mm -hmm. Unbelief says, God, you're a liar. Right. And, and it, there's a lot of difference because I think all of us wrestle with doubt. Well, and here's the thing if you read the, the, the writings of the evolutionists of our day, um, they don't just say, hey, I choose to not believe in God, this is a free country, et cetera, et cetera. No, they attack God. They do. And it, it always amazes me if they don't believe in God, why do they bother to attack Him? Because well, they don't believe He exists. That's because I, I, you know, I've, I've had the privilege of knowing a lot of non theists. Mm -hmm. I think, I've never met one yet that I didn't think deep down inside was concerned that. Mm -hmm. they, they believe deep down inside there, there is a God, or at least they're, they're haunted by that specter. They're like a little boy whistling through the graveyard. Mm -hmm. But you'll remember the night I was at Wichita State, and we were in that, well, it was called a dialogue. It was really, I guess, kind of a debate between myself and one of the professors at Wichita State, who is a creation science, even though he's in the psychology department. And then also a couple of friends that I had who were students and they were part of the non-theist society. But I remember, and it was three hours. Mm -hmm. uh, it was long. It was long, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you think it felt long watching. Um, it was excruciating. <laughs> it, it felt long up there. But mm -hmm. I remember there was a point about an hour and a half in that I got the other side to admit that the natural order bore evidence of design. Absolutely. And from that point on, uh, you know. And here's the thing. In our generation, there's really no denying it. it because the deeper science goes and the more revealing science brings us evidence the evidence just mounts higher and higher and higher it, it, it takes a great deal of faith to deny god i believe it does and in the wrong kind of faith mm -hmm. i mean it just it's almost uh, in fact this I, I need to get to where i'm going with this but um I, I really think there's a whole lot more of the psychological elements of ultra fundamentalist religion in mm -hmm. the belief system of people who deny the existence of God as a creator because it's almost like they demand lockstep thinking right. and that's what cultic you know mm -hmm. don't ask this question yeah, don't ask this mm, question don't ask yeah this don't look over there yeah. okay now where I want to go with this today Mary Alice you and I were reading this psalm um, the other day it's Psalm 104 and it is a wonderful psalm uh, I want to just encourage all of us to read the whole psalm because we can't talk about everything here today but let me just read the first verses and then and then a verse that occurs late uh, the psalmist writes let all that i am praise the lord O lord my god how great you are you are robed with honor and majesty you're dressed in a robe of light you stretch out the starry curtain of the heavens now that begins 32 verses of just this gushing language about God as creator. And I want you to read that if you get time today. It's Psalm 104. Uh, and just look at the beautiful language. I mean, as you, as you hop down through that, uh, you know, chapter here, you'll read, you place the earth on its foundation. You close, clothe the earth with floods of water. I mean, on and on it goes, the things that God does as creator. And you know the verse that I really snagged onto when you were reading this uh, the other day. David, or the psalmist, I, I don't know if it's David, but the psalmist said in verse 33, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live, and this is the line I love so much, I will praise my God to my last breath. Mm. Isn't that great? That's wonderful, that's yeah. wonderful. Well, it is, I, I, would, I would argue, um, that is critical to believe in God as creator. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, a, I'm opening up a whole nother can, but Romans chapter one, talks about how the world gets into the debauchery and depravity and just all the sexual confusion. And and that chapter starts off by saying, or that whole section of that chapter starts off by saying, they did not want to worship God as creator. That's great. That, that was the first step. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we look at the confusion that we're in today. Mm -hmm. And it goes, I mean, if you look at, like, just take the confusion over gender that we have today. Mm -hmm. And, and children are just being, mm. Uh, mm. Uh, I mean, I don't, even, I don't even want to go into that. It's just so depraved. But I, I really believe from what I read in Romans chapter 1, it goes back to the point where America, at least, 
decided that God was no longer a useful hypothesis, at least in all the public squares. And God's glory was removed from the public square, and now we have all these problems. Well, and it's, it's God creating us that gives us value. Yeah. And, and I think that's the thing we miss the most, is why would we turn away from the one who actually gives us value? Well, let me just offer a, 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 some homework on this. Yeah. You know, I, I stay so busy, a lot of times I forget to just pay attention to the beauty of God's creation mm. and the majesty of it. Mm. And so today, why don't, I mean, some of you probably do this every day, but why not just take a look around you? I mean, mm. it's spring here in Kansas. It's a good time to it's make notes time. on how wonderful and You look at the beauty around us and just think about the wonders of our world that no human ingenuity can explain mm -hmm. and then praise God and say like the psalmist I will praise you until my last breath mm. which reminds me of a song yeah oh, that yeah. imperial song one more song oh yeah one more song as long you. as yeah. I have breath I'll sing one more song I love that. you might just download I'll, I'll link that okay link oh, that's that. great yeah. okay we're gonna pray for us today. yes oh father thank you for creating this world that we live in thank you for giving life thank you for sustaining life we're so thankful, Father, that you're such a great God, that you're powerful enough to do that. Um, it, it might feel like things are shaky, but we have confidence that you are able to sustain the life that you've created. And I just pray that you'd help us to realize the great love that you bestowed on us in creating this world and us in it, and help us to all turn and worship you as creator. Um, and I just pray for each and every person, each and every family that are watching and listening today, a special blessing on them, Father, and whatever their day holds ahead of them. I just pray that you'll guide them through that and, and be with them in every challenge and that you will be glorified and honored in our lives. Uh, once again, Father, we just thank you. And we want to just take time to um, uh, make a list, Father, and thank you for so many things. The, the list just goes on and on. We're so thankful, Father. And I just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Well, thanks for joining us today on Noah's Window. Mary Allison, I'll be back tomorrow, God willing. See you soon. Yes, see you soon. God bless.